welcome back. You are listening to Linda Pinizzato from the Condo Expert through Bayshore Health and Wellness, powered by the Hayes FM here in Mississauga. You know, we're actually talking a bit of health and wellness because if we think about the development of our children and we think about Youth Day in Toronto and we have Tylene Duggan on the line and we're discussing all the different benefits and positive exposure that these children get from being a part of Youth Day, which is actually at Dundas Square. And this year it will be hosted on July the 21st, and it goes from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. So, you know, Tylene, I mean, that's a really important point. I mean, all of these children, they will start meeting all the other children and youth and so on that are involved in the arts. They've got to develop long-term friendships because they have a common denominator. Oh, absolutely, Linda. I mean, it literally becomes their external family, and they keep in touch year after year with people they might have performed before or maybe after or they met at the press conference. It really, it's, hi, nice to see you again this year type of feeling. And they're not alone. In many cases, some of the aspiring artists don't necessarily have their parents as artists. In other words, they kind of feel a little isolated. They're not getting particular guidance because the parents just don't know. They're not a singer. And it's beautiful to watch these kids interact with each other, say, hey, you know, if you want to do that, I've got a guy over here and he does that. And all of a sudden, you know, it it helps them, again, create a focus on their vocation or their interest or their focus. And that's what we want to do with our youth. You know, let's let them know, if you put in the hard work, you can succeed. And that's why the headliners come out, to let them know, hey, I was raised in Rexdale, and, you know, my name is Cardinal Fishon. and look at me. Well, it you know, really that's a- has, Yeah, it really has no circumstance and shouldn't based on the family's ability. Well, the thing is, is too, you mentioned family's ability. You see, from what I'm understanding, I mean, most of the performers in Youth Day are not children or youth that have the ability or the financial monies that would be able to get them any type of professional instructions. It's not like they're, you know, they're able to, mom and dad has the cash or just, you know, single mom, single dads are going on here. I mean, you know, to some degree, children that have not been exposed to all of these high quality kind of benefits of being involved in music schools and so on. We're talking about raw talent to some degree. I have to thank not only scouts that come out, but also people like, uh, for example, Zach Warner from Canadian Idol, Judge. He runs the Idol School of Music. He has offered free classes to, you know, the diamonds in the rough, if you want to call them that. They certainly have the talent and the ability, but perhaps financially, as you say, they can't go forward. But people will step up and try and help these kids, and that's what we want to see is, people stepping up, sharing their talent. If you happen to be good at something or your career is in something, please help us out here. You know, we're all trying to work for the benefit of everyone in the city of Toronto and help our next generation. Oh, share the talents. I love it. I think that's it. Have a separate thing of sharing the talent. You know, because there is. There's an awful lot of people out there that can provide, you know, these expert coaching and all these things that they've been involved in. And, you know, the arts is a love. It's no different from people that love hockey or love football or soccer or racing cars or whether they love music, they love, as you said, the ballet side or jazz or whatever. It's a love, you know, it's in your heart. And a lot of the children, I think if they're they're up there and they're they're singing through their heart, but they haven't had the direction. I'm just absolutely amazed because, honestly, I, <laughs> I wish I had that kind of talent. <laughs> yeah, I really did. I was born as an athlete. <laughs> Athleticism comes I incredibly say, I could, easy. I could take you out for karaoke, Linda. <laughs> and let's see microphone. if you have it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk to you. Well, actually, it's kind of funny. I, shouldn't, I should remember one thing because, believe it or not, when I was 15, I was in a... I was I was actually in a 
a group. There was three of us, and we used to go around to, we actually went to the Dawn Jail. <laughs> yeah, we didn't have any coaching or anything. We just all pretty much hung out and were singing and so on. I can sing quite well. I just can't play any instruments. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll I'll have just to do it on your show one day. But I won't qualify because, you see, I have to admit I'm over 29. <laughs> <laughs> We'll just have you do it on your show one day, Linda, for your audience. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, right? And but you know, and we used to with our church. We used to go out to like the Don, uh, the Don mm-hmm. Jail. Yeah. And I remember, and we had one friend of mine actually, and he used to play the harmonica. Does that not bring back? <laughs> and we're going back now. I don't think there's very many harmonica players nowadays. But yeah, and I will tell you, even though we were there, I mean, really, if I think back at it, it was pretty crazy. You think about it, we're there singing to the inmates at the Dawn Jail. Is that crazy? This and is, and this is going you back know, you just years mentioned ago. the harmonica, Linda. Yes. There's another segment. We don't want to die out. But I don't see young people playing harmonica. Or the accordion. Think or about that. Accordion. I have so, an accordion, believe it or not. So, I mean, accordions, I don't play it. <laughs> and I don't want to lose these skills and I, art forms that, you know, have been here for hundreds and hundreds of years. Well, you know, it's funny. If you go down to Oktoberfest in Kitchener, right? And what do you see on stage? It's, it's wild. I mean, you see the, uh, you know, with the gear, but you like, also because my see background the is German. Group, Linda. Oh, yeah. Well, for sure. But, but I'm thinking of the spoons, you know, where there's, yeah, yeah the spoons, right? Exactly. Uh, we all remember right. that. The, the Bavarian, you know, the Bavarian type of style of music. But I guess the point I'm trying to get across here is, is that music is enjoyed culturally all over the world, all over the country. And yeah. You know, and, bringing and this together is types, awesome. All types. Yes. I mean, I'm sure if Justin Bieber was to play Spoons in his video, it would be hot again. <laughs> well, you know, putting that out there, geez, why not? Justin Bieber, <laughs> I mean, he, Bieber is Canadian. I mean, yes, honestly, so if he's in town that weekend, I think he should be going to see Youth Day. <laughs> you know, just make an appearance. Actually, we're very lucky. Uh, a lot of the artists do come out, even the sport players they'll come out and do a shout-out to their fans, and it's great to see because it's, you know, in my case, I've raised six kids, and, you know, what I say is not really cool, but if an an NBA player says it or an NFL player says it, well, that's a totally different story. Oh, absolutely. Well, you're just mom, but, you know, I never do yeah. still believe the six children part. That is unbelievable. You're a woman <laughs> of... <laughs> Wow. No, well, that's what, you know, I mean, that goes back to it again. You obviously, you love children, you want to participate, and you want to give back. I'd you like know? us to drive their positive behavior, and it's up to us to do that, and we need to do it together. We can't just depend on teachers and government. We need to do this, much as the saying says, it takes a village. And if we want to improve the city of Toronto and encourage our youth, then we have to engage them. So let's at least applaud them at Youth Day on July 21st because it makes a whole lot of difference in their life. It's ever life-changing for them. Absolutely. And with that note, I want to applaud all the uh, volunteers that you have that help you out as well. You know, it's not easy. It is, I mean, from one year to the next, I will guarantee you that the minute that the curtain closes at 11 p.m. on Sunday, July 21st, on July 22nd, you're back to it again, trying to prepare for next year's Youth Absolutely. Day. Absolutely. And just from you a see, historic... see, people don't realize that sometimes. Well, from a historic standpoint, too, and I mean, when we started in 2007, I really did not know what Youth Day was going to look like. I just called it. And we had 5,000 people already. And that was with no sponsorship whatsoever. I thank Nathan Phillips Square and the City of Toronto for that, but... It's now ballooned to 30,000 people in just seven years. And again, again, we are an event of municipal significance. And I just want your audience to realize what this does, not only for the kids themselves, also their parents that are now secure that their kid has a focus, a passion, a new passion, and they're practicing hard, but also for all of us who live in Toronto, Because if we can just get these kids to redirect their energy, and needless to say, I picked stuff I knew they'd like, music, dance, art, and photography. That's the key. Let's give them what they want, and let's applaud them. 
you know, it's sometimes I really like, you know, it's funny because when you're a volunteer and or a creator and a founder, I think that, you know, sometimes we look at things differently. You know, I enjoyed being part of Youth Day and being the chair, past chair of Celebrations of Youth. I mean, I was working with you there for, I guess it was about three and a half years Mm -hmm. until the Condo Owners Association came into my mind. And it was a very tough decision for me because I, you know, I really enjoyed being a part of your entire venue there because I think it's so incredibly important. But it was time as well as when the vision came clear that the Condo Owners Association had to, uh, you know, I had to start it. There was no two ways about it. It was your it. passion. It Linda. had to be. It, well, it had to because, you know, I think so many people were running into so many different problems. The government didn't have all the proper mandates out there. The Condominium Act wasn't protecting the condo owner. You know, values, although we've had an increase in values, and not all the buildings. Some buildings are actually having financial problems because they don't have enough in their reserve funds and they don't have enough in their operating budgets and their maintenance fees are too high and there's no governance and there's no accountability. So, you know, it's an interesting thing because our paths were together and then we pulled away a little bit and now we're going to try to bring it all together again because, you see, it all works. Well, ironic again because, frankly, the value of real estate is much based on the geographics and youth or youth violence will often predicate what's happening to that particular community. So let's end this nonsense of, you know, it's senseless violence. It's had a particular effect not only on on the reputation of the city of Toronto, Toronto the good, but it's also had a reflection on real estate pricing, for example, in certain areas in Toronto. So let's turn that around and get these kids into something where at least that gets alleviated and then real estate prices can be where they should be. Well, exactly, you know, because that impact, I mean, the gangs, you know, out in certain areas, I mean, we read about them out in Scarborough and so on. And, you know, we have condominiums all over the province. And, you know, there isn't one area that could not be susceptible to this kind of problem. Well, for example, it happens Fleming, everywhere. Well, Flemington Park, when well, it was created, was right. never what it was today. Mm-hmm. But, you know, again, the gun violence, the type of reputation that an area gets surely does impact uh, the real estate pricing of that area. So, and we create, okay, so we create a model to help children move forward with a positive lifestyle and positive influence. And, you know, because, again, not only, you know, with condominiums, for instance, you know, our youth today are our future adults of tomorrow. Exactly. You know, so... And we're all going to have to benefit or suffer from it. Right. And that's up to us right now to do something about. And, Linda, if I may introduce, um, I'd love your listeners to to know that um, I've, <laughs> in my spare time, created another concept called the tie card, which goes very much in keeping with what we just spoke about in communities. Tie card is much like an animal's card, if you will, and we're going to we're going to go right into the tie card, but we just have to break. Okay. To Linda Pinizzato at the Hayes FM through Bayshore Health and Wellness. And you're listening to The Condo Expert. We'll be right back to talk more about the tie card. Linda Pinizzato, whether it's a house, townhome, or condo, when you're ready, she's your negotiator. With 34 years of experience, Linda guarantees that you have the real estate knowledge you need to make the right decisions. Call Linda Pinizzato at Sutton Group Quantum Realty, 416-561-7373, or visit her at lindapinizzato.com. And thank you so much for joining me. You know, today has been just a fascinating time of learning so much of what's going on out there. And that's what the condo expert is all about. I'll hit so many different issues. You'll notice them on iTunes and on podcast. Reporting here from the Hayes FN, 
You have been listening to Linda Pinizzato of the Condo Expert. Now, also remember, register yourself if you're a condo owner, a condo buyer. Register at www.coaontario.com. And also, if you've got questions, whether they're real estate related or condominium or property values, this and that, you know, I wouldn't have the uh, information I have had I not had the experience that I've received, and I certainly wouldn't have been able to start the Condo Owners Association without having this kind of a background. So contact me at Linda Pinizzato, P-I-N-I-Z-Z-O-T-T-O at coaontario.com or Linda at lindapenizzato.com. Until the next time, have a fantastic day, and thank you so much for tuning in.